right, what's going on boys and girls? So this particular video is to show I have substance, quote unquote. Um, long version is let's talk about uh, making that switch from say Mac OS or Windows to Linux. How can you make that transition easier? Personally for me, I have found that when switching people to a different OS, as a Mac versus Windows to Mac, Mac to Windows, or Mac to Linux, Linux, you know, take your pick, it doesn't matter. If you can make the underlying OS not matter, most generic end users aren't gonna care. They just want applications that they're either familiar with or that they've used on the platform prior that they are coming from. And the best way to do that is give them applications that are cross-platform. Now, these are going to be a mix of open source and proprietary. So if you don't like that, tough shit. So first up, as you can tell, you're going to need a web browser. So we're going to go with Firefox because if you want, you know, privacy and open source-ness of it, can't really complain too much there. I do have another browser now this is a personal preference and opinion so take it for what you will my other web browser of choice is actually opera the 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 pro the built-in proxy slash vpn thing that they do is kind of cool um and it's kind of a power user ish uh take on things but i really do like opera as far as it's my browser of choice next up you're going to need a office suite and well that can make things interesting because you have a couple of different choices and they're all cross do not these are all cross platform so they all work on mac windows and linux the one i personally use in my preference is the one called wps office it's got some built-in cloud stuff which is good because it runs on android ios mac linux windows and you can synchronize across that stuff. That is very important to me, so hence that is not a feature I'm willing to forsake. The plus with this is it's not Google-fied. It's not tied to Google. That is part of the reason I use it. But that, that, that cloud feature allows me to still have some of the Google Docs good, goodness without the dependency on internet connection all the time because it's not always going to be available so if you if that is not a key feature for you though if, if like that cross device synchronization doesn't matter to you just just go use LibreOffice. It, it's fine it's it works for 99.9% .9 of every single user there is there's nothing really more for me to say about it if you are so if you're on Windows and you're looking to switch Again, the whole point of these application selections is to make the underlying OS not matter at all. Um, so we all have points in time where we want some entertainment, though. So you get, if, say, you have a movie you want to watch, MPV, quick, simple, really, really simple uh, video player for your platform. Uh, not much to say about it. it it's fairly intuitive um, it's all mouse controller finger control and however you want to point that uh, but the next one is let's talk music now this is local music this is not Spotify or anything like that which is available on Mac Windows and Linux as well this one is called exile exhale sorry uh, and this is a local music player done in a feature set in GTK of Amarok 1.4. Uh, so it's got a lot of, there's plugins and there's various other things that you can do with it. For me, it, the way it handles database management and, you know, it's a lot more flexible in the, the, the file hierarchy and stuff that it does, which is perfectly good for me. Uh, so next we have video editing. Say you want to make a AMV, anime music video or something. Well, you can use Shotcut, which is a great inter introductory level uh, video editor. Um, for the mo it's cross-platform. Um, there's also Caden Live and OpenShot, but if I'm going strictly based on what 
people will use it will probably be shot cut and that will get you to what you need to be this is a little more than iMovie but a little a lot less than say something like Adobe Premiere it's a happy medium and it's not hard to use UI is not my thing I'm, I'm more of a kid live guy but to each their own so the, this, this is the thing about people other than personal preference if you need something a little more professional shall we say I'm going to recommend Lightworks. Now, there's also DaVinci Resolve. Pros and cons there. Uh, Lightworks, it tends to play nicer with a wider range of hardware. DaVinci Resolve is very particular. So uh, this is why I recommend Lightworks. Um, the free version actually is, is now is quite actually quite good, um, but it's definitely a software worth buying. Um, I've bought it and definitely worth getting it. So now that you've done some video editing, say you record some audio, uh, what are you going to use? Most people would tell you to use Audacity. I love Audacity. Unfortunately, for most normal end users, that UI is way overcomplicated. So I'm going to recommend Ocean Audio. It's a lot more simplified. It's a lot more straightforward for the generic end user, mom pop person to actually understand and get into say audio editing next up this is going to be something that if you're into photography it will be very important to you it is dirt table um, some people will recommend raw therapy uh, these are your adobe lightroom alternatives uh, there's also if you want a proprietary app i believe it's called corel aftershot pro if, I, if I'm not mistaken, which is another proprietary Lightroom alternative. Uh, I know a lot of photographers on Linux who actually prefer this over Lightroom, which is kind of weird. Um, but if you're looking for that, a, a free Lightroom alternative, Darktable is about the best one you can get. Now, are you of the digital drawing type do, do you have that Wacom tablet or that, that that pen to do your drawing with well you might want to look at Krita Krita works on Mac Windows and Linux uh, I, I can't say enough good things about Krita Krita is for image creation uh, this, this is a digital a digital drawing board and draw what you will that whereas something which is the next application I'm going to recommend is called GIMP GIMP this is more for image manipulation this is not Photoshop replacement this is a consumer level version of Photoshop it is not gonna be as full-featured it has some drawbacks but 99% of most end users will be totally fine with what GIMP is able to provide. And then next up, we have, if you need something that is scalable, i.e. vector graphics, Inkscape. Another one is called Carbon. I prefer Inkscape because I think the UI is a little more refined, a little easier to find stuff than, say, Carbon. And then, of course, there's going to be, well, want to play video games. Why aren't you going to install Steam? Steam, the way to go. Play video games. All the fun stuff. This is a base level of applications that I would recommend to look at if you're looking to switch. Because, again, at the end of the day, if you use these and you get your workflow into these kind of applications, and it's just the applications at the end of the day that you really care about and need, this covers your bases. And at really at, at the core of it if you have access to this stuff the the baseline OS isn't going to matter it's not going to matter if you're on Windows or Mac or Linux and I know this because I live in all three and you know what I use all of these applications on all three platforms so that's my take that's my opinion what do you guys think are better applications to help people ease that transition from their prior OS into, say, Linux or Mac or Windows. 
Is it these? Is it something else? Comment down below. Give me your opinion on it. And, well, all the links for Indiegala, Patreon, all that crap is down below as well. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.